Just today, Google announced Genie 2, which is a foundation model that's capable of generating these endless variety action controlled and playable 3D environments. In the examples that I'm showing you here, all of these are being played and controlled almost as if it was a video game. The way that these are created are based on a single image. Imagine just being able to pass in an image. This could be an AI generated image or an image of a photo you've taken, and then ultimately be able to infer what that environment is around it. Now you can essentially create these simulated virtual environments, and it includes whatever the consequences are from taking those actions, whether you're swimming or jumping or acting as a character. The way that this was trained was similar to other generative models. It was trained on a large video data set, and from that training, there are emergent capabilities at that scale, such as being able to detect objects, complex character animations, physics, and the ability to model and thus predict the behavior of other agents. Now, in all the examples that I showed you, all of these images are actually also generated from one single image from their image generation model. You can think of this something similar to Dolly or Midjourney. It's Google's version of that diffusion style model where you can put in a text prompt and it will generate a photo for you. They describe in the blog post that this effectively means that anyone can describe the world in text, select their favorite rendering of the idea and interact with that newly created world. How this works is when you're using your keyboard or mouse to interact with the model, that model is going to simulate the next response, almost like that next token that we see from things like ChatGPTs, the GPT series of models, and just large language models in general. Another thing that I thought was impressive is that Genie 2 can generate consistent world models for up to a minute. And the majority of examples that I'm showing you in this video are between 10 and 20 seconds. As you see here, there's a bunch of different examples. Another thing that they highlight is that they can generate a diverse trajectory from the same starting frame, which means that it's possible to simulate counterfactual experiences for training agents. In these two examples here, every video starts at the same frame, but as you can see by the end of the video, they're very different ultimate outcomes, right? There's a great distinction on the bottom there, what it's like to take one path versus another path and that will infer the subsequent steps. It's really cool and imaginative to think about, obviously in a video game context, but also just in the context of maybe something like a virtual reality environment. If we're all of a sudden able to just generate these worlds that we want to play around in or exist in, I could really see how this could potentially be a popular use case obviously within VR or within video games. As you can see, it can really create a diverse set of environments as well as things like 3D structures. And the other cool thing with this is there's even the ability to have the interaction with different objects. You can see in some of these examples, like shooting a barrel or jumping into a balloon and it be able to have that response similar within this example, going through and walking through that door it's able to detect that object, some of those emergent capabilities. And as you see, here's an example of the model interacting with NPCs, not characters that you're playing, but characters that are within the environment and being able to have dynamic responses based on your interaction with those characters. And then if we look at the physics now, I know we're probably going to get some comments within the description of the video, potentially of this looks terrible or what have you, but mind you, this is just the beginning. Like I'd imagine in a year, in two years, these are going to look really impressive. This might look like an old video game, especially given how sophisticated video games are now, but definitely in time, as these models begin to improve the methods, as well as just the scale of information and the techniques to actually develop these models improve, it's a safe bet that these things are going to improve dramatically. There's some examples of smoke, gravity, lighting, we can see reflection even. And then here's an example of playing the world environment based on real world images. Say you take a nice majestic photo and you want to walk around within that environment. Another thing that they call out within the blog post is that Genie makes it easy to rapidly prototype diverse interactive experiences. And this enables researchers to quickly experiment with novel environments 
to train and test embodied AI agents. Here's just a few more examples of a paper plane, a dragon, a bird, as well as what looks like a parachute. They talk about this environment as a great tool for artists and designers to quickly prototype and bootstrap new environments and help the creative process. The way that they're describing this is it's not necessarily something that's going to obviously replace a complicated video game, at least not in the short term. Instead, just use it as a tool to augment and ideate different ideas on how that world could potentially look. Here's an example of an image generated from Imogen, and the prompt was a screenshot of a third-person open-world exploration game. The player is an adventurer exploring a forest. There is a house with a red door on the left and a house with a blue door on the right. The camera is placed directly behind the player and it's photorealistic and immersive. And then based on that, the SEMA agent that they designed is designed to complete complex tasks of a range of 3D games by following natural language instructions. Here's the instruction where the prompt is to open the blue door based on that first initial frame. And then the second one is open the red door. But you can start to see how you can take one image, have an agent potentially run a command or a different series of commands, especially with its capabilities of being able to run up for a minute. It could give you a lot of ideas, maybe if you're a game developer, to think about what's inside that house or what's around that corner or what does the environment look or as a whole. And then finally, here's just a few more examples of an image generated from Imogen. And if we look down, here's three different prompts with natural language with that SEMA agent, all of which are taking and rendering different environments on the fly. Finally, just to close it out on a couple technical pieces. So as they describe within the blog post, Genie is an autoregressive latent diffusion model trained on a large video data set. After passing through an auto encoder, latent frames from the video are passed to a large transformer dynamics model trained with a casual mask similar to that used by large language models. At inference time, Genie 2 can be sampled in an autoregressive fashion, taking individual actions and pass latent frames on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. We use classifier-free guidance to improve action controllability. The samples in the blog post are generated by an undistilling base model to show what's possible. We can play a distilled version in real time with a reduction in quality of the outputs. This video is brought to you by Scrimba, the innovative coding platform that brings interactive learning to life. Dive into a variety of courses from AI engineering to front end, Python, UI design, and much more. Scrimba's game changing feature is their unique Scrim screencast format, which lets you pause the lesson anytime and start directly editing the teacher's code. Their curriculum is built in collaboration with industry leaders, including Mozilla MDN, Hugging Face, and Langchain, and includes building application with OpenAI's Claude, Mistral models, and guides you on deploying projects to platforms like Cloudflare. While AI tools can assist with coding, a solid grasp of the fundamentals is essential for achieving real experience. Scrimba offers something for everyone from complete beginners to advanced developers and about 80% of Scrimba's content is completely free. Sign up for a free account today using my link below and enjoy an extra 20% discount on their pro plans when you're ready to upgrade. I'm sure you'll love it. Here's the flow of the text to image based on the Imogen model, and then that image is passed into the encoder. And then depending on the keyboard shortcuts within video games, W is usually forward, A is usually left, and then in this example, E is representative of attack. Here we just see effectively how this works is based on the command. We, we have that decoder generating that next frame. So from W to A, it's a taking this image frame by frame. And then based on the action, it's going to generate that image each time. Finally, they say that this shows the potential of foundation world models for creating diverse 3D environments and accelerating agent research. They describe that their research is towards building more general AI systems and agents that can understand and safely carry out a wide range of tasks in a way that is helpful to people online and in the real world. There's some interesting outtakes here of a few different videos, but otherwise that's pretty much it. What do you think? Is this something that you're interested in exploring? Is this something that you would use as if it was a video game? Say if in the future you could generate an hour worth of content, would you just think of spinning up a video game and playing it on the fly or within VR? Would you leverage this 
would this be a use case where maybe you'd finally consider buying and using a VR? Maybe something like this could potentially make it more and more interesting, especially over time as these things begin to improve with quality. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.